Hi, this is Adrian Gundy here, doing a little five minute session on the whiteboard here, looking at root cause problem solving. What we're looking at today is what's commonly called 8D or 8 disciplines. And this is an adaptation of 8 disciplines problem solving. It really is root cause analysis problem solving. And if you want to master this particular type of problem solving, there's three things you really have to understand. The first one is the point of cause. All problems are caused somewhere physically in time. And it really doesn't matter uh, what type of problem we're talking about. You can actually see a problem happening if you were able to stand in that space in time. So the point of cause, where it happened, is our first consideration. The next consideration is what we call the direct cause. This is the idea that we need to understand exactly what has happened. And then the last part, part of course is the root cause and here we're talking about the reasons for it. Now these might sound similar but they are in fact actually quite different and to sort of help us illustrate how this works I've got a little picture here. Now in this particular picture we're looking at a crossroads. If you can picture a crossroads and here's the stop line that side and here's the stop line on this side and so we have a typical crossroads. And here on this side we have a car and the car is uh, driving across the stop line like this and it's going in this direction and it meets a car coming the other way going in this direction and of course there's an impact. So that's an accident. So if you happen to be on the scene the question you might ask is what exactly has happened? And we can use these three different ways of looking at the root cause to try and explain to us what has happened. The first thing we need to identify is the point of cause or the point of accident here. Some people say it's on the stop line because the car didn't stop. Other people say it's the car driving along the main road because it was going too fast. But if you really think about the words point of cause, the actual point of cause is the point of impact. And so we can very quickly identify in this case the point of cause as the point of impact. So that's the first part. Now we need to understand a little bit more about what we mean by the direct cause. Another way of using words to describe direct cause is sometimes helped by using the word what has happened. What directly caused this accident to happen? And as we ask people, again we get a variety of answers back. Sometimes people say he was going too fast. Sometimes people say driving without due care and attention. Maybe the brakes failed. If you think about all of these things, they're not really exactly what has happened, what has directly caused the accident. If you were standing here as an eyewitness and you were watching this, you could see that in this particular case, this car has driven across the stop line without stopping, thereby causing the accident to have happened. If you were watching from the sidelines, maybe the car was stopped and pulled away across the stop line without due care and attention. Either way, when we're actually Looking at the evidence, we're trying to determine what exactly has happened. Um, for this example, the witnesses saw that the car did not stop and drove across the stop line. So the direct cause is the car did not stop at the stop line. Of course, now the next question we ask is why? Why did the car not stop at the stop line? Now we're moving into the realms of the root cause, trying to understand why. And as we look at this, we can start to gather information. We can ask questions like, what has happened? And why this has happened? And people might say, the brakes failed. Maybe people will say that the, the driver was drinking. Maybe the driver was going too fast. And so on. And we can have a variety of things. We can brainstorm, if you will, a range of potential or possible root causes. And then when we go through this, we need then to 
filter out those ones which we believe it not to be to leave what it is. The tool we use for this method of course is Professor Ishikawa root cause or uh, fishbone diagrams. That's the tool of choice to help us do this. In our little example here on the board we're just brainstorming a list of potential or possible root causes. But in the structured problem solving workshop we actually start to use proper tools and techniques to do this for us. Having done this we might come to a conclusion that perhaps the car was going too fast. In all the time when we're doing this one of the things we realize is the context in which the problem has happened will possibly from time to time have a bearing on it. For example if I was to say to you that just here a hundred meters down is a sharp bend in the road then that might influence your thinking. If I said to you that it was a Friday evening and on the side of the road here we had a public house selling alcohol that might impact upon your thinking. If I say to you here we had a school and the accident happened in the afternoon again those facts, those conditions, the context in which the problem is occurring would influence the outcome of your, your thought processes. For the sake of this illustration we're going to work with the car was travelling too fast and the sharp bend in the road. You could say there was a sign there which there would be of course but that having come around the road there's a sh actually a short space of time for the car to slow down notwithstanding that there were a hazard or a warning sign advising of the oncoming junction. Now what we find now is because we've identified the direct and root causes the actual jumping off point to a solution becomes a lot more easy. In fact in many cases what we find is the solution actually is almost obvious, almost transparent. We're coming around the corner too fast and the road junction is upon us. Now we can brainstorm a list of potential solutions. Perhaps we might things like uh, rumble strips in the road or perhaps we might make the sign larger or perhaps we might have flashing lights to uh, raise a, a more awareness, an early warning for the driver. Perhaps we might have rumble strips before the bend to actually slow the driver down before the bend physically so that we remove the problem altogether. Straight away you can see that the process of looking at the direct and root causes actually facilitates the understanding better and makes the, uh, the generating of potential solutions much more effective, much more efficient. This is just a simple whiteboard exercise to illustrate the three key elements of eight disciplines problem solving or root cause problem solving. The point of cause, we need to know exactly where the problem happened. The direct cause, we need to understand what directly caused it. And then the root cause, and the word we often use to help us there is why. Why did it happen? And by doing this in a structured and systematic way, we can actually uh, solve problems to the point where they'll actually go away and not come back again. This is the basis of eight disciplines root cause problem solving that we do at the Centre for Competitiveness and uh, we have a series of tools and techniques around this to help uh, teams and people actually solve problems in a structured way on an ongoing basis. So please visit our website allthews.cforc.org for further information. Thank you very much.